problems with monetary policy. And this is coming from Keynes. Keynes. Look carefully now. Why monetary policy is ineffective in a depression. And if you don't like depression, say severe recession, okay? What we're calling today in, in the United States the lesser depression or the great recession. Not quite the great depression of the 30s, but pretty bad, okay? Keynes is going to argue, and we're going to go through these two arguments, why monetary policy is not going to get us out of that mess. And therefore, you need fiscal policy. So let's see what his arguments are, okay? Why monetary policy is ineffective in a depression. Reason number one, let's see where I want to go here. Reason number one, the liquidity trap. Liquidity trap, okay? This is Keynes talking now, okay? We're going to draw a supply and demand diagram for money. The amount of money in the economy. And the supply of money is going to be a fixed amount, whatever the Fed says it's going to be. We'll just, and we'll make it, on any elastic supply, we'll make it a vertical line. Here is the money supply, number one, at the current time. And then we're going to have a negatively slope money demand curve, the demand for money. And let me explain that. Because what we're looking at here is the quantity of money here and the interest rate or the cost or price of money on the vertical axis. Okay? Now think about this. This goes right back to everything we did about monetary policy. If the Fed were to reduce the supply of money, the, curve would, the supply curve would shift to the left. If the supply curve shifts to the left, what happens to the interest rate? When the supply curve is over here. The interest rate is fine, just like we said. You reduce the supply of money, interest rates go up. That's all this graph is saying. And if you increase the supply of money, what happens? Well, the interest rate will fall. You'll go down here. New, lower interest rate. Okay? There's a little more to it than that, though. The, I think the simplest way to explain it is, let's assume that when it comes to money, you've got money, right? You have a choice. You can hold it in cash in dollars or whatever your currency is, or you can hold it in some sort of investment, we're going to call it bonds. Okay? Now this goes back to our, our uh, explanation earlier about bond prices and interest rates. If interest rates get down very low, do you want to have a lot of your money tied up in bonds? Think about it. Interest rates are very, very low. How much do you want tied up in bonds? If you've got a lot of your money tied up in bonds and they're only paying 1%, what's going to happen? Probably the only way interest rates are ever going to move, if they move at all, is to go back up. And if interest rates start going back up, what's going to happen to the value of your bonds? It's going to fall. So what I'm saying is that people want to hold cash, more cash, when interest rates are low. So if the money supply were over here, MS2, the interest rate is up here, interest rate level number two, hey, that's a pretty high interest rate on our little graph, so if you're holding bonds, you're earning a good return. But if the money supply starts increasing and pushing down the interest rate here to I1, right, the Fed increases the money supply, why would they do that? Because we're in a recession. Because they need to stimulate aggregate demand. And so the Fed, in trying to get us out of the recession, says, well, increase the money supply, increase the money supply, reduce interest rates so people will borrow and spend more money. And, you know, typically that's what happens. But here's what, what it leads to. Once the Fed continues to increase the money supply past some point, I would have done two here, one, this would be the money supply number three, and we've driven interest rates down here to a very low level, call it 1%, just for, for grips. 
Once the Fed has done all it can so far in increasing the money supply to try to rescue the economy, the argument is that this demand curve at this low level of interest becomes flat. Now we draw it flat to explain the idea that if the Fed continues to increase the money supply, it's not going to have any effect on interest rates. It's not going to have any effect on the economy. That if you have driven interest rates down as far as you can, Fed, central bank, you're going to hit a minimum there and past that point, increases in the money supply are going to have no stimulatory effect on the economy. So what's been going on in the United States under Ben Bernanke? He's been keeping interest rates low, and he's been increasing the money supply to make sure it stays low, and to make sure, by the way, everybody is staying liquid, right? In the sense that everybody's converted their bonds into cash, nobody wants to hold bonds, but now everybody's holding a lot of money, banks are holding a lot of cash, businesses in America are holding record amounts of cash, and the idea is to keep that money ready to work when the economy starts to recover. So that when the economy starts to recover, so we start getting a little more spending going on, businesses will say, wow, it's time to increase our inventories and our production. Or, wow, it's time to build a branch office or build another factory. Good. And so we want them ready to do that at a low interest rate. So Bernanke's keeping the interest rates very low. A lot of people right now are saying, yeah, but if he keeps increasing the money supply, isn't that going to create inflation? Think about that. We're down at a very low level of produ production of, of GDP. Would you as a business want to be raising your prices today? No. You haven't got any customers anyway, or you've lost an awful lot of them. Why would you want to raise prices? So the idea that all this money is going to suddenly overnight create huge inflation, well, not as long as we stay in this liquidity trap. When the economy starts to recover, and it will eventually, we don't know when, right? When the economy starts to recover, what's the Fed going to have to do? It's going to have to gradually shrink that money supply, start reducing it slowly without driving interest rates too high because that will cause the economy to crash again. So as the economy grows, the Fed's going to have to try to reduce the money supply without harming the growth, kind of a balancing act. And if Bernanke's successful at doing that, then we don't have to worry about inflation then either. Okay? And he knows that. So let's see what happens. All right, this is problem number one, why monetary policy doesn't work in a depression, because you can find yourself in a liquidity trap where you can't drive interest rates any lower. That's, that's a little complicated. You may go and watch through it a couple of times, but read through it a couple of times. So let's look at the second reason. The second reason is because of an inelastic investment demand. And this one maybe is a little more intuitively obvious or appealing. Okay, here's what happens. We're going to look at the amount of money businesses are borrowing to invest or spend, right? Remember that? Capital goods, new construction, inventories, right? How much money are businesses going to spend on that at different interest rates? And we should expect normally that this curve looks something like this. I'm going to call it ID1, investment demand 1. And what is that line telling you? It says when interest rates fall, businesses borrow and spend more money. That's common sense, right? That should be obvious. If it's cheaper to borrow money, borrow more money. And, you know, Keynes didn't have a problem with that in normal times. But what he said was when we get into a depression, this curve is going to change. When businesses see, you know, large-scale unemployment, no sales, no activity, no spending, they're going to get afraid. They're going to become afraid to invest, afraid to grow their factories, expand their factories, because nobody's buying anyway. And so here's how we explain it with a, with a picture. We say this curve in a depression begins to look more like this. ID2. And let's look at the difference. If interest rates were 8%, it used to be that businesses would borrow, let's call it Q1, that amount of money. But now they're, they're afraid, they're worried. And so at 
they're borrowing a lot less money because the economy is in bad shape. It used to be, by the way, that if we had reduced interest rates through our monetary policy, right, if we reduced interest rates down here maybe to 4%, what would businesses do? We read out and we say, oh man, they would go out and borrow and spend a lot more money? Wow, that would really stimulate the economy. Yeah, sure, okay, because things are good. But in a depression, businesses are looking at that and they're saying, okay, instead of 8%, we can borrow money at 4%, but there's still no business out there. There's still no customers coming in. There's still no guarantee that if we expand our inventory or build new factories, hire new employees, there's still no guarantee we're going to have any customers. So even at that lower interest rate, I'm not going to borrow and spend very much more money. This is my Q2 now. So decreasing the interest rate didn't do much good. That's an inelastic curve. It says when this number drops, this number doesn't change very much. All right? This is a function of expectations. Businesses are very pessimistic, very worried, and they're not about to go running out there and borrow money and spend it, invest it, when they don't see the hope of more customers. In fact, you can imagine a banker calling a business and say, hey, man, I got, I've got money for 0%. Would you like to borrow it? The guy would say, what for? What do I, I don't need to expand my inventories. I don't have any customers. I don't need to expand my factories or modernize them. I don't have any customers. I don't need to get involved in new construction. Ain't nobody buying new construction. So, yeah, you just about give me money, but I've got no use for it. I've got no way to put it to work to earn a profit because I have no customers. I have no aggregate demand. So here's Keynes talking to us. You're in the middle of a depression. Aggregate demand has shifted way over to the left. Unemployment's very high. Nobody's spending. You think businesses really want to borrow money? Uh-uh. No, they don't, Moose Graff. Okay? So what does Keynes leave us with? He says, in a depression, monetary policy is not going to work for two reasons. So what do you got to do, Lord Keynes? Fiscal policy. The government's got to spend money, create a deficit if they need to, and stimulate the economy. That's the only solution. What do you think? Maybe that'll be part of your final exam. Who's right? The Keynesian economists? or the neoclassical economists. All right, that's a good start. Thank you.